Now part three. The next day, Aunt Fig got a call from Mr. Lickboot, who said that they'll be out of money if Mr. Starling finds out they're not taking care of Robin. So they hatch a plan to find Robin by putting a $1 million reward on milk cartons. Meanwhile, Robin, Emmy, and Max were washed up on shore and unconscious. They were taken to a strange man's cabin. Emmy and Robin woke up and saw and were scared by a parrot puppet and screamed, which woke up Max. The man introduced himself as Captain Kitty. The kids thought he was funny, very funny, but were also feeling a bit dizzy. So Captain Kitty made breakfast for them. Robin told them they were on their way to Tibet, which made Captain Kitty and his puppet named Squawk break into a song about how they've traveled around, all around the world and uh, Dragonland. However, after the song, Captain Kitty and Squawk noticed the $1 million reward from Aunt Fig on the milk carton. They were they freaked out in excitement as when they read it. Meanwhile, Enrique fell down a waterfall. He was a familiar waterfall. He was near the school in the sky. He went there to go get help from Ord, Cassie, Zack, and Wheezy, who are volunteering for Kessel like they do every weekend. Enrique hopped onto Zack and Wheezy back, and they uh, flew off to go find Robin, while Quetzal went to tell Robin's father. Meanwhile, uh, Enrique's parents were on their way to pick him up and tell him exciting news. Daddy Starling uh, heard about Robin and went in his helicopter to Robin's favorite place while Quetzal followed him. Meanwhile, Tom and Jerry were woken up rudely by a piranha fish. They found Robin's locket, Emmy's hairband, and Max's Mondo Mouse action figure, and knew they were nearby. Meanwhile, Captain Kitty called Aunt Fig about the reward. Dr. Applecheeks overheard the conversation, rode off in his truck, but was soon kicked out by his henchmen, but pushed the ice cream man off of his ice cream cart and rode off slowly. But Mr. Lickboot came over, and they and Ferdinand, who was still a little sick, rode off really fast. As Tom and Jerry continued their journey, they found a milk carton with Robin a picture on it. Could she be nearby? They climbed up a tree and saw a carnival on the other side of a bush with a really tall ferris wheel. At the same time, the dragons saw the same ferris wheel, and Wheezy was so excited. But Enrique noticed three kids. They were Emmy, Robin, and Max. They were let onto the ferris wheel, but held captive on it because of Aunt Fig's reward. Robin was sad and scared because of how high they were. But after a few minutes, a balloon with Robin's locket f flew up to her. Max's Mondo Mouse toy fell on him, and someone handed Emmy her hairband. They were filled with joy because all their friends were there. Emmy and Max hopped onto Ord and Cassie's backs, and Jerry made the Ferris wheel move to and got Robin off. But just then, the bad guys arrived, and Robin, Tom, and Jerry hopped onto a boat and rode off while the other kids flew on the dragon's backs. The dog catchers got stuck on a Ferris wheel, Captain Kitty got lost at sea, Dr. Applecheeks drowned, but no one saw Aunt Fig, Mr. Lickboot, or Ferdinand. The dragons were only paying attention to uh, uh, to Robin, Tom, and Jerry. They soon arrived at Robin's cabin, a special place where Robin and her father would go a lot. The gang got off the boat and the dragons landed on the ground as the kids went inside. But Enrique wasn't so sure about it because he saw a suspicious car parked near the cabin. The other kids went inside hoping to find Robin's father, but they found something horrible. Daddy is dead. Aunt Fig said menacingly. She had taken a shortcut. Robin, Emmy, and Max shrieked as everyone else got locked out.
Tom, Jerry, Enrique, help! cried Robin. Everyone watched the kids from outside. The bad guys grabbed the kids, but Robin kicked Lickboot in the shin, which made him knock over a lantern that set the whole cabin on fire. The kids screamed and ran upstairs. Lickboot called them down, but Robin didn't want to. So they got out at, onto the boat and rode off. They were later caught by the police and thrown in jail in the real world. So were the other bad guys. The kids climbed on a rope and were pulled out. Ord and Cassie saved Emmy Max, but Tom, Jerry, and Robin were stranded on top of the burning cabin. Until Robin's dad and, and, and Ketzel uh, came to save them. Well, Mr. Starling saved uh, uh, Robin. Ketzel tried to save Tom and Jerry, but it was too late. The fire got too big, and the cabin fell apart. Tom! Jerry! cried Robin. Everyone was sad, and some started to cry. But just then, Tom and Jerry came out of the water. Oh, Sherry, please be okay, Tom said. I promise I'll never harm you again. I'm right here, Tom, said Jerry. Robin ran to hug Tom and Jerry. Robin, said Mr. Starling, I promise I'll never leave you again. Then the kids said their special rhyme to go back home. I wish, I wish to use this rhyme to go back home until next time. They end up back in the playroom as Emmy and Max's parents has some exciting news. Emmy and Max got to move to New York with Enrique. They got to bring the dragon scale with them as well. So I guess it's all a happy ending for everyone. Speaking of, Robin showed Tom and Jerry their new home, and they remained best friends. They remained best friends, huh? It was a good song. Well, for a few minutes. Yeah. Be like us and start a trend. We're friends to the end. Um, it's all in how much we give. That's it for now. See you guys later.